Today we're talking about the difference between media on the edit timeline, then taking that into Fusion through something like a Fusion clip, compared to just taking it directly into Fusion. So without further ado, let's get started. So for those who don't use Fusion that often, they're typically going to think that making something into a Fusion clip is going to be relatively the same as just taking it into Fusion, it's just that you won't be able to manipulate it on the timeline, which is true but isn't really true. So let's come over here and let's first take a look at what our project settings are. So our project settings are currently set up for 1920 1080 at 24 frames per second. That's gonna be really um, good to know because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a 4K clip in, we're gonna drop that in. Now, if we don't edit it, and let's say we come in halfway and we make a cut and we want to add some effects to this, if we don't turn this into a Fusion clip, what's gonna happen is the current thing that, that we're working on is gonna go directly into Fusion. So let's take a look and see how that looks. What we can see is we have that media in, and we can see that we have in and out points. And that's pretty much because there was a cut. This piece of media that comes in, it's saying, okay, for me, and let's come back over here, let's just change it. When I say me, I'm specifically talking about this. Fusion is going to, well, everything is gonna look at this as two different, complete, completely different uh, clips. Even though that they're the same clip, but because they're cut, they're, they get treated completely different. It's like when you add over here in the inspector, you add some um, settings. It's only gonna go to that particular portion that you have those settings added. So hopefully you're following me there. So let's go back into Fusion. Now here in Fusion, it's saying, okay, for that little green clip that we had there, the end point for that is going to be here at frame 81, and it's gonna to go to frame 239 of that clip. Currently, we didn't turn that into a fusion clip. So what it's going to do is it's gonna take that clip itself and it's gonna push it directly into fusion. So we can see that by up here, let's just go one screen. We can see that up here, our uh, frame, or excuse me, our resolution is going to be up here. So like we were saying, this is 1920-1080, uh, but when we're pulling it in directly from that source, it's going to have whatever that source's resolution is. And then this was adapted to this frame rate of the timeline. So that's something else to keep a note here. It's adapted to the frame rate of the timeline. If we come over into uh, the edit page, and now if we turn this into a Fusion clip, what it's doing behind the scenes is it's taking that clip and it's putting it into a timeline and then that timeline is going to come onto my my timeline here because if i come into uh, to see multiple timelines i can come into here and i can open in timeline and we can see the other timeline and that green clip that we previously had if I come over here, now we can see that that same information is getting pulled into a timeline because it's doing two things. It's encapsulating that previous clip that we had and it's putting it onto a new timeline and now it's presenting it as a new timeline. But because our project resolution is 1080, this is now perceived as 1080. So if we go back into Fusion, what you're gonna see is two things. One, it starts at frame zero, and two, if we take a look up here, it's now 19, 20, 10, 80. This is good to know if you do like compositing work where you want you know all of the resolution that you can get compared to if you're doing something with the frame that you don't need the extra resolution. So it's something to note and something to, to keep in mind. Now, if I was to Let's say I would come over here. Now you can really do this for anything, but I'm just to make it a clean slate, I'm going to uh, to do it this way first, is if I just make a fusion comp, what it's really doing is it's just going to be a fusion element with the start time and the end time 
and then you can manipulate as you what as you will and then it'll just get pushed back to that little uh, portion that's on the timeline itself so now if i was to bring elements in here so like let's say i want to build a good composite or whatever I'm working on, I just want to have the ability to use all of the pixels instead of having it um, you know, broken down into something smaller, as well as being able to manipulate uh, its in and out points a little bit better. So I'll bring in this clip, and when I'm bringing them into the uh, Fusion Comp, I'm getting everything, I'm getting uh, its resolution and I'm getting its full uh, length of the clip. So if I come here to keyframes, this you can kind of look at this as like the timeline. We can see that we have the uh, here's the beginning and here's the end. But because this is only five seconds at 24 frames per second, it's only 119 frames. We can see that we have it here, but then we have this little arrow that just means that there's more there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make another uh, another comp, but I'm going to make this one significantly longer, right? So now this one's significantly longer. If I come back into Fusion, we can now see that this is 655 frames. Now let's bring in that same clip. Oops. Bring in that clip and we can see now I mean it's the the name of that clip is kind of big but here we go we can see that this clip is 241 frames and it's not the full length of the whole fusion comp so when you're working on let's say like a title sequence where you have a ton of different images popping up this might be good to know because you can set where you want particular shot to start on, let's say if you're doing a title sequence, where you want that shot to start and where you want it to end uh, when you're building out your node tree. So now I can take this and I can move this and it'll start and end anywhere I want. So let's just bring in a black background and lay this on top of the black background. And let's actually turn the black background to something we can actually see. So now if we view this, if we come to the beginning, we can see that obviously it's not here. And then as it plays, then we start to see that. So currently this, uh, well, this one is um, 4K and then we have this background and this is just auto resolution. So it's going to be pulling whatever the project resolution is. If you ever need to change that resolution, you can come over here, turn off auto resolution and change that and, and you know, make it whatever size you need it to be. But now if I was to bring in other clips, we can see that this clip here, where to go? Hello. Okay, it's over here. We can see that this clip here is 1920, 1080. So now we have multiple resolutions in here. And if we were to lay like one on top of the other and view that, and let's bring this guy back so we can see them. Now we can see that we have multiple resolutions and different down here we can see that they're different lengths they'll start and end at different points so now you can really start to do what you used to do in all of these other tools uh with a timeline here because i get a lot of questions about like oh you know how do i start it and end it and then they end up bringing a whole bunch of <laughs> elements from the edit page and it gets really messy but i just wanted to show you the difference between bringing in elements um, from the edit page um, compared to if you just bring them directly into fusion and then being able to manipulate their uh, time and the other thing too is let's say we have this clip here right and let's say we accidentally pull the end of it now if we pull the end of it it just made the clip longer but then the clip really isn't that long so if we watch this it'll be very apparent what happens so we have this play and we can see, let's just play this particular clip. Whoops, which one is it? If we play this, what we can see is it just, it's kind of like a freeze frame. So if we click on it and we look over here in the inspector, what we can see is that the trim is gonna kind of tell you how long the clip is. So we start at frame zero and we go up to uh, frame 89, which is 90 frames. Um, 
and we can see that at frame 89 we are going to have that freeze frame for however long we want the, the last frame to, to hold. So the longer we make this, the longer the clip goes. So if you accidentally pull one of these, all you have to do is come into the media itself in the inspector, click this little button and it'll go back so that there isn't anything that's being uh, like a freeze frame. And then you can just pull it uh, as you need to here, or you can come up here and pull it as well. Uh, but that's just something to, to keep in mind there. So you, as you can see here, uh, if you ever need to do any like freeze framing, you just pull the end of it and it's just going to hold that last frame for however long you put here. So I want to hold it for 129. So once it gets to that uh, last frame, it's going to hold it. Same with the beginning as well. You can have it hold the beginning um, for however long you want. Now you might be saying, okay, well, if I set this to 14 and 14, oh, now I'll hold frame 14. No, you have to remember what this is actually doing. It's holding the first frame for 14 frames and it's holding the last frame for 14 frames. So to get a freeze frame, what you need to do is you need to change the trim to whatever you want that frame to be. So what you would do is you'd bring this into wherever it is that you want. So let's go to 1414. And now if we come back to this little piece, we can see that now we're holding 14. Obviously the first frame is going to hold 14 and the last frame is going to be 14. So it's only one frame. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one of these you stay to hold. It's now going to hold that frame 14 for 242 frames. So that's how you would uh, create a freeze frame if you ever need it to. So there's one other way to bring media into Fusion, and I think this way has changed a little bit. I'm not exactly sure why, but you can use what's referred to as a loader, and you can bring your media in. Before, you used to be able to bring just about anything in, but currently, it seems like it's just like image sequences. So I'll at least show you how that's done. So all I'm going to do here is in our node tree window, I'm going to hold down shift and then hit spacebar. And in here, I'm just going to type in loader hit enter and now it's going to uh, go to my file system and then I can pick out a file um, here. This is my subscribe button that I use at the end of my videos. So I'm just going to click on the first one, click open. And as you can see over here, the whole thing is 121 frames. So I'll go from zero to 121. So if I come back here, I can see that. Um, bring it back and we'll view it. And then here is my image sequence uh, with my belt and all of that. Uh, so you can still bring in this kind of stuff this way. Before this was kind of the tool to bring everything in, uh, but they've kind of limited just to images. So um, that's how you can also bring in stuff. For the most part, people that are gonna be using DaVinci Resolve are just gonna be putting it into the media pool anyway. So you don't really have to worry about the loader. Loader still used, but it's not like really necessary for people to use it right now because media in nodes do pretty much the same exact stuff. So, uh, but then once we have all of our content here, uh, all we would have to do is then just go to the media out. That's going to then push everything back to the timeline. Um, so we do that, we come back and then over here we have all of that stuff um, coming into the timeline and it's all visible here and ready for us to um, to add into our project. There is one other thing that I haven't talked about yet. And this is if you're going from um, DaVinci Resolve to the standalone Fusion. I know a lot of people aren't really going to be doing that workflow, but I'll show it here. Is let's say you have our clip in our media pool on our edit page maybe it has something done to it but we want to take it to fusion so we're going to right click and we're going to new vfx connect clip it's going to take at whatever we select it's then going to make a raw version a raw fusion version of that that is then going to get pushed into fusion which then can be edited so we're taking this one file that's going to go onto our system 
and then Fusion's going to open up. We're going to edit in Fusion. Once we've added everything that we want to, we can then uh, send that back to DaVinci Resolve, which is going to be another render. So we send it back to DaVinci Resolve. It's going to now have whatever we did in Fusion, in the standalone Fusion. So um, that's for larger projects and more so if you need the standalone Fusion. Standalone Fusion is good for people that are specifically just want to use the Fusion and its ability to do like render clusters and stuff like that. But the Fusion in DaVinci Resolve, nine tens out of 10, is more than powerful enough to uh, to do whatever you need. Um, so that's kind of the differences between them. Uh, in the future here, I'm going to be uh, diving into more in the fusion and then recreating things that are seen out in the wild that a lot of people have been asking me, how do you recreate this? Um, so understanding how the media works because we're gonna be using a lot of different elements uh, but understanding how that works will jumpstart you in the uh, videos that I have to come. So if you have any questions about DaVinci Resolve, the workflow on the edit page, cut page, color page, any of that, you can go to my Facebook group, ask your question there. If someone has an answer, they can help you along the way. The link's in the description to that. If you want some pre-made tools for DaVinci Resolve, you can take a look at my website. I have some stuff to offer there. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.